Kelly Crawl. And I'm Linda Mottis. Welcome to the site of what will be the new St. Eugene's Church. And home to thousands of Catholics right here in Oklahoma City. Please excuse the mess while we take you on a tour of a project that's been 47 years in the making. The church we use now, of course, gets the job done, even though it was built as a temporary church, a permanent gym, and a parish hall. But the truth is, this church means a lot to so many of the people who go here because of all of the important memories they've shared right here, from weddings to funerals, baptisms, and first communions, not to mention all the moments they've sat down right here and shared special conversations and prayers with God. Oh, if these walls could talk. No, Kelly, if these walls could talk here in the confessional, oh, what they would say. I think I hear them speaking now. If you've confessed in here before, you're probably squirming, but don't worry. I don't usually do that, and there's no one in there anyway. But if those walls could talk, they would say, retire me now, please. And we're working to take care of that because we're building a new confessional over at the new church. And we're building a bride's room, too. Kelly, why don't you help with this one? Well, Linda, this is it. This is your bridal room and a room for meetings. And as you can see, there's really not a lot of space. There's not even a mirror in this room. There's no place to put your curling irons or your hair dryers and makeup. And while Father Jacoby and some of the other guys might not see why this is such a big deal, trust me, this area could use a lot of work. To solve this problem, we have the perfect plan in motion. This new church will have a huge bridal room big enough to fit an entire bridal party. And get this ladies, men, just bear with us, the ladies understand. This bridal room will have a bathroom with seven toilets, seven toilets. The setup is great for people to come and celebrate their weddings and other events. But Linda and I, we are far from wedding bliss. Far from wedding bliss, Kelly, we're not that far off, come on. Well, we like to come to church to worship, grow deeper in our faith, and of course, visit with our church family. This new church will offer that and so much more. Just take a minute and look at what we see for just one minute. Look through here and imagine the church brand new and ready for people to walk through. This is a computer image of what it will look like. As we know, our Catholic faith starts with baptism. And take a look at this huge baptismal font. As you can tell, it's not completed yet, but when it is, this will be big enough for any adult to be baptized, and maybe the whole family. So it might appear that there's a lot of space to walk around and even in between the aisles, but not as much as you might think. You know the statues that are placed throughout the present church now? Well, they're going to be placed in this new church as well. And you know the Stations of the Cross that hang in our sanctuary now? They're very hard to notice, but in the new church, they'll hang along the wall against a granite background as a reminder of the sacrifice that Jesus made for all of us. And you can't see them now, but we have room for 33 stained glass windows to be inserted throughout the church. A recent gift from a parish family, a very generous gift, and a very important one too. That's right, Kelly. Stained glass is important to the history of our church because that's how we told stories of the Bible. Not only is it important to our salvation history, but this also gives us a glimpse into the beauty of heaven. Now take a look at this computer design of our church. It will feature a visible tabernacle. The tabernacle will be prominently placed behind the new altar and visible from anywhere in the church. Linda, here's a question. Do you know where it is in our current church? I learned in RCIA that our tabernacle is behind the altar, but it's hidden in a corner and very hard to notice. In the new church, it will be placed in a better location. In fact, there are lots of biblical reasons why items are placed where they are. I mean, we are Catholic, right? So everything has to have meaning. Let's look at this example. Here is where the tabernacle will be placed, underneath a baldacchino. Baldacchino, that's your vocabulary word of the day. See, it's even labeled here. It's kind of like in the Old Testament, how the covenant containing the Ten Commandments was protected by a tent. Think Raiders of the Lost Ark, and that might give you a better idea. Thank you. 
not to mention a handicap ramp so anyone can come to the Ambo and proclaim the Word of God. And the acoustics in here, it might be hard to hear them now. Hello! There is an amazing sound that allows everyone, even those in the back of the church, to hear the choir as well as the gospel readings. As you can see, this is all going to happen. It's already in the works. We will have a new church. And we will have a big bill for it too. That's where you come in. We know you may have already considered giving a financial contribution if you haven't already, but I want you to know that this is your chance to become a part of history. When you finally get the opportunity to walk through these doors and see the wonderful efforts, you'll be so glad you helped make that happen. We need almost a million dollars to help meet the financial obligations of building this church. Just like we want the best for a loved one at a wedding or a funeral, we also want the best for God's house. If we can pay for this church now, we won't have to take out a larger loan and pay lots of interest. The question is not, can you give? It's how much are you willing to give? God bless, and we'll see you all Sunday.